Welcome to the Addiction Mindset Recovery Coaching YouTube channel. In today's brief video, you're watching part two of the three-part series that I made on the Quitting Weed Survival Guide. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you guys about the symptoms and a timeline of symptoms that you can expect to experience if you're quitting THC products. I'm also going to give you some simple tips and tricks to help you manage each of these symptoms. Now, before we jump into it, I do want to say a really quick disclaimer. Depending on the type of THC products that you have been consuming, withdrawal for you might look very, very different than THC. THC withdrawal for someone else. For example, if you're like me and you've been consuming black market THC products, the oil cartridges or black market edibles, there's a good chance that not only is your body going through THC withdrawal, but you're also going through a heavy metal detox potentially. You might also be going through a serious pesticide detox because you might have had some degree of pesticide poisoning, not to mention maybe even other drugs that some of these products could be potentially laced with. Also, for those of you guys quitting products that included THC and tobacco, keep in mind when you quit, you are also going to be experiencing nicotine withdrawal. Now, with that being said, not everyone experiences withdrawal. Some people stop using THC and they're 100% fine. It's like nothing happened. But for those of you guys more like me who think you're going to struggle or have struggled in the past, this video is definitely for you. So what happens? In the first one to three days, one of the most common symptoms you're going to experience is insomnia. And I remember the insomnia drove me absolutely crazy. My best advice for you when it comes to insomnia is to just get through it and don't fight it. More often than not, we see people start to reach for a bottle of booze to help them fall asleep. They start drinking beer. They start taking Benadryl. They start taking over-the-counter sleeping aids, prescription-based pills. Don't do this. The goal isn't to quit weed to trade it for another addiction. Your body is trying to heal. Your body is trying to restore its normal sleep patterns. Let your body do its thing. Now is not the time to try and knock yourself unconscious. You just have to deal with the insomnia. And the more you fight it, the more anxious you get about it, the more frustrated you get, the worse the insomnia is going to be. So some simple tips to help you out. Try taking a hot or warm shower before bed. Try reading a book before bed, okay? Try exercising very lightly to moderately first thing in the morning or around mid-afternoon. That's going to help improve your sleep later on. We'll talk about exercise in more detail in a little bit. And then I would also recommend potentially looking into getting a weighted blanket. I put a link for one on Amazon in the video description below. Weighted blankets are awesome. I still use them to this day. They're super comforting and they tend to help, in my opinion, ease some of that anxiety that you get if you're rolling around tossing at night with insomnia. Now, my last piece of advice on insomnia is this. If you find yourself tossing around in bed and can't fall asleep, get up, watch a little bit of Netflix, watch a YouTube video, but nothing too stimulating just to take your mind off the fact that you can't sleep. And then eventually come the next day or the following few few days, you may find that you need to take a nap, that you're resting during weird times during the day. Give your body that rest. Take that nap. Let your body sleep. Let your body heal when it needs to. But please stop fighting the insomnia. It's going to happen. There's no way around it. This is life. On a side note, if you want to look into something like taking melatonin or ZMA capsules, over-the-counter supplements, once again, that's fine. Probably not going to do any harm, but I think very rarely is that actually going to provide you with any benefit. I do have instructions for those supplements in the video description below. The next side effect that a lot of people deal with or symptom of THC withdrawal is nausea, morning sickness, stomach pains, and gastrointestinal changes, diarrhea, or constipation. So a lot of people find when they're quitting THC that they can't eat food, or maybe they've actually lost a lot of weight while they were addicted to THC. 
And what we're dealing with here is actually a state of malnourishment. So this person has become malnourished. I definitely, I lost, I don't know, 10, 20 pounds when I was using black market THC cartridges. So we have to talk about renourishing and eating foods that you can actually consume. So let's look and see what some of those foods would be. So choice number one would be blueberries, okay? Eating fruits and focusing on fruits is a really simple thing to do. Fruits are high in carbohydrates and fast-eating sugar, and they're really easy to digest. So I like blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries. Any one of those are going to be an excellent option. The next thing that I encourage people to go pick up or make for yourself is some hard-boiled eggs. And I actually put a hard-boiled egg cooker in the video description below. Eggs are great sources of nutrients, vitamin D, B vitamins such as choline. You get your proteins, you get your healthy fats, hard-boiled eggs, awesome. No hot sauce, we want to keep it plain Jane. As for fats, I'm a big fan of nut butters. I use sun butter. It's not the healthiest of the nut butters out there, but it does get the job done. Yes, an almond butter or cashew butter would be a bit healthier, but I like sun butter. Shakes were a big part of my day-to-day routine when I was nauseous. I would make fruit smoothies. I would use something like this, an unsweetened almond milk. I would mix that with a scoop of a scent whey protein powder. I've switched my protein powders over the years, but I love this one. No artificial sweeteners or anything like that. And I would mix that right in a shaker cup. So some fruit, you know, you get some frozen blueberries, frozen blackberries. You get a ninja blender, blend that all up with a scoop of protein and some unsweetened almond milk. And boom, you now have a really nutritious shake full of micronutrients in there. I also liked to snack on Kind Bars, not the healthiest thing in the world, but they got the job done. And then at night, I would actually warm up and drink bone broth. Bone broth is an excellent source of protein. And I would usually put some like, you know, frozen spinach in there. And when I'd microwave or steam the bone broth, that would thaw out. But nutrition, you guys, it's so important that you re-nourish because there's a good chance that you're suffering from a degree of malnourishment. And those are just some things that I found really easy to get down. Now, for those of you guys dealing with a lot of nausea, you can look into getting something like ammonium tablets. You can look into getting some like Pepsid AC tablets. You could look into getting some Dramamine tablets. Of course, before you start any medication or supplement, always speak to your doctor. And if you don't want to go the traditional kind of medication route over the counter, you could look into using ginger. Ginger is an herb and it's a great anti-nausea herb, herbal supplement that you can find in the video link below or at most vitamin stores. The last thing that I want to talk about when it comes to nausea is staying hydrated. It's so important that you stay hydrated. Now, a lot of people find that they can't hydrate properly because maybe they're not feeling well or they've been sick. Consider buying some sugar-free Propel or sugar-free Gatorade, freezing the ice cubes, and then putting the ice cubes in a bottle of water or container of water. That's going to make the water taste better and make it more enticing for you to drink. The next withdrawal symptom that people usually experience in the first one to three days is headache. Really simple solution for headache and and body aches. I'll throw body aches in there too, guys. Again, taking warm showers, light to moderate exercise, and if you talk to your doctor and it's okay, consider going to take an Aleve or a Tylenol pill. Tylenol or acetaminophen is a pain blocker. It blocks the signals of pain from your nerves to your brain. Aleve is an anti-inflammatory that's naproxen-based. I personally preferred taking things like Aleve. It didn't bother my stomach. I didn't have any reasons I couldn't take it. And that really helped for the first two or three days with the headaches and the muscle pain that I was experiencing. Now, I would never encourage you to take those things long term because they come with some serious side effects when abused and misproperly used. Way worse side effects, arguably, than weed. So don't go overboard on that. If you are experiencing muscle pains, I would recommend not only warm showers, but also capsaicin cream. That can really help people out if you're suffering from a lot of muscle aches and pains. And that brings me to my point about working out, actually. 
during this time, your pain modulation and your pain reception is all screwed up. So don't go crazy in the gym. Not only is that going to make the withdrawal symptoms much worse, but I think it's also going to create a lot more myalgia or muscular pain throughout your body. So very light to very moderate exercise. Don't push it. Some other withdrawal symptoms that I was experiencing, sweating. Sweating, super annoying. My best advice to you is just embrace it. When I realized that my was going to be a sweaty mess for the next, you know, three days, and honestly, this went on for about a month for me, I just started to take hot yoga classes. I said, screw it. If I'm going to be sweating all day long, I might as well make it worthwhile. And I might as well go meet some people in the process that aren't going to judge me for it. Enjoy sweating. This is your body's process of detox. This is you ridding your body of all that THC that's been accumulating over the last several months or last several years. Days three to five, this is typically where we see a peak in the anxiety, anger, and irritability. Now, I remember for me, I was getting panic attacks while I was using weed and I thought it was helping, so that was stupid. I made a whole video on anxiety and weed that you guys can check out. It's in the video description below. But I was not only anxious, but also super irritable. And I think it's really important during this time that you surround yourself with people that understand what it is you're going through and people that don't annoy you or frustrate you. I would avoid people and tasks that you have that you find super stressful. And hey, if you hate your job, um, maybe now is a good time to use up some of that sick time or take some sick leave for the next week or so until things kind of calm down. If anxiety is your major issue, I would argue, listen, I used weed for years to cope with anxiety and I never developed any proper coping skills. If that sounds like you, what I would recommend doing is getting the book or downloading the audio book, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. One of the beautiful things about quitting an addiction is we learn new coping skills. We learn healthy coping skills. And this book for me was a game changer. On top of, I was also seeing a therapist for a period of time as well. But don't be surprised if you're feeling extra irritable, extra anxious, or even a bit depressed when you first quit smoking weed. Just remember, it's your responsibility to work on this and pull yourself out of this. Don't just quit weed and expect that everything's going to be great. Sobriety and recovery takes work, and it's your responsibility to start repartaking in things that you enjoy doing and rebuilding activities and hobbies and relationships, things that bring you joy. It is your job to learn how to do those things. You have to actively do those things. This is funny too. It's in days three to five, guys. One more note on insomnia. When the insomnia peaks is usually around days three to five. This is also days five to seven where most people relapse and fail because they can't handle the withdrawals, which is sad because this is also the point where your brain is starting to heal again from THC addiction. Right around day four, significant healing starts to occur within your endocannabinoid system. But sadly, this is when most people relapse. Anyways, I remember one night with the vivid dreams because the sweating and the vivid dreams definitely play a role of insomnia. And I had a dream that I was in the movie Evil Dead and I was using a hacksaw to saw off my arm while I was standing under a hot scolding shower. And how I managed this was I would just tell myself, okay, Frank, you're going to have insomnia tonight and you're going to have a wild dream. So I would just pretend like I was getting ready to go to the movies. And honestly, I loved it. This should go away after a month or two, these crazy vivid dreams. But for right now, embrace it. Buckle up, get ready to go to the movies. And I tell myself, is tonight going to be an action movie? Is it going to be a comedy movie? Is it going to be a horror movie? I never knew, but I honestly, guys, I had fun with that. I had fun with the vivid dreams. That's my best advice there. Now, one of the things that I wanted to point out as well, too, on days five to seven, when relapse typically happens, I think this has a lot to do with cravings. And I put some videos on managing cravings below, so go check those out after. But I also think a lot of people don't have accountability, they don't have a plan, and they have too much time on their hands. 
One of the biggest symptoms of quitting weed is boredom and having too much time on your hands. It's your responsibility to fill that time and re-engage in new things. Um, Weed doesn't cure boredom. It makes you content with being bored. It's your job to become an unboring person now that you're getting sober and you've started this kind of recovery journey that you're on. I found the high performance planner to be a huge benefit for this. And guys, when it comes to accountability, you can work with our offices if you need, or just download an app like the, uh, I think it's Grounded is the app. Yeah, Grounded, not Grinder. Grounded, the Quit Smoking Weed app. It's a great app. There's a great social community on there. Just some simple things to help hold you accountable. Those are two of the biggest reasons why I think people relapse. Boredom too much time on their hands, and a lack of accountability. Somewhere around days 28 to 30, most of the withdrawal symptoms should subside. Definitely within about 90 days, yes, I have seen some people really struggle for up to 90 days, believe it or not. Usually those are the people dealing with cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome. And the the last part to all this is, listen, don't quit weed and expect to feel like a million bucks there's a really good chance that you've been neglecting your physical health, neglecting your coping skills, neglecting your mental health. There's a good chance that you haven't been taking care of yourself for this whole duration of time that you've been addicted. So don't expect to quit and feel better. The thing is, you were too numb from weed addiction to realize how crappy you actually probably felt. This was the case for me, and it took a lot of work to get to this point to where I'm at today, but I'm telling you it's fun work, it's exciting work, and it's good work when you approach it with the right mindset. Why don't you guys follow me into the next video where I talk a little bit about cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome for those of you guys that are experiencing extreme nausea and vomiting when you're quitting cannabis. I'll see you guys there.